So this is the all new Fire TV Cube from Amazon. And for the very first time, you may be able to go completely voice control only with this device. Switch to BBC One on satellite TV. Tuning to BBC One on cable. And away. He appears to be in no mood to compromise. So my friends, this is something which I've been excited about for a while now because this is the first time that we in the UK have seen the Fire TV Cube. Now I know my friends in America have had the first generation of this product and it's got pretty good reviews. So I was excited when this arrived in the last 24 hours because it has literally just been released across the world, the second generation in the United States, but it's the first time we're seeing it in Europe and in other territories. Inside the box, you get the power adapter, you you also get an infrared extender and I'll come on to that in just a second and you get this which is an Ethernet port so you can plug this in via Ethernet which again is a nice little touch I just don't know why this wasn't built into the actual device itself there's obviously all the usual blurb as well but this device is something which is far more than anything that's come in its previous generation because this will not only control it but it will control other things as well so you'll be able to control your whole AV system and I'm going to show you and give you a demonstration of that in this video. The cube itself is quite small in size and I'll compare it to a couple of other popular products in just a moment. On top you'll notice that there are eight far field microphones. Now this is more than what was on the first generation and they are designed for your voice to be heard over and above the noise of the speaker on the TV. Now it is important though you don't place this exactly next to the speaker of the TV or your soundbar and make sure that there is a little bit of distance so that your voice is heard. Now one of my pet hates about this is the amount of dust that it collects. The material is just one of those that this has literally been out of the wrapper for 30 seconds and it already looks like it's been sat around for a week. So this might annoy some people but if I were you I would keep it underneath the TV in a cabinet or something like that. On the back you have simple connections for USB, infrared, HDMI and power. Comparing this product in size to a couple of other popular products, the Apple TV 4K on the left, the Nvidia Shield on the right, you'll see this is about two and a half times taller than the Apple TV and it has the same type of footprint. And it's got about half the footprint of the Nvidia Shield, but obviously it's a lot, lot taller. The controllers for all of these devices vary in size and they vary in smartness. Now one thing to mention is with the Fire TV Cube you don't even need to use the controller half of the time so that is a real big plus and I'll be giving you a demonstration of that later in this video. Okay we're in my spare room now and it's time for us to set this device up. It's very very simple all you need to do is hook it up to an HDMI port on your TV and then plug the power cable in and then we'll just follow and switch switch to the on-screen instructions. So the first thing that you'll want to remember to do, which I didn't, was put the batteries in the remote control because otherwise it will come up on the screen saying that it is looking for the remote. However, as soon as you get those batteries in, it will automatically click you through to the next section. So unless you have never done anything like this before, the setup process is completely simple. You select your language, you then choose between Wi-Fi and Ethernet. Obviously, if it's Ethernet, it will detect that already. If it's Wi-Fi, then you need to select your Wi-Fi source and then add the password. Once you've done that, it will then look for updated software. And in my case, it took around about five to 10 minutes to update the very latest software. Most people in the world today have an Amazon account, so all you need to do then is sign in to your Amazon account, which is very straightforward to do. And then it will take you through another couple of screens, whether you want it to be registered to that account or a different account, and also whether you want it to save the Wi-Fi password, which I definitely recommend doing because it will just save time in the future. Now, your Fire TV is designed with children and parents in mind, so you can set up a kid setting if you want to do so. You then, depending on your location, will go to to a page where you can then download apps. I'm here in the UK and it's giving me a choice of a number of different apps. And all I need to do is use the controller to select which apps I want pre-installed. Now, this doesn't stop you going to the app store at a later date and getting these, but it just makes the process a little bit quicker. And I think it's a nice feature. 
Now, the really clever thing about the Fire TV Cube is for the first time, it does a very good job of being able to control your other AV equipment. And what I mean by that is that you'll be able to say the magic five letter word and then say, turn off the TV and it will turn off the TV, it will turn it on. You can then change between satellite provider and Fire TV. And if you had other things plugged in, you can do that as well. Now, mine recognize my TV straight away. It gives me then the option to add a soundbar. So I went up, selected soundbar, it, all it did was ask me for the make of the soundbar, and I've got a choice here of Amazon Basics, LG. Mine is a Samsung one, and so I went down. It then started the process of do we hear music, and you can hear music. So you literally just follow these on screen. Very, very simple instructions. Anyone that's had a Fire Stick will know it can do basic voice controls. Play the Grand Tour Season 1. Getting the Grand Tour from Prime Video. So now you can really take this to the next level and control things like your cable and satellite box. And all you need to do is to go into the settings and go to equipment control. You click into that and then you can do manage equipment or set up equipment again if you haven't done this before. So then click into add equipment and then just follow the very simple on-screen instructions. It literally takes around 30 seconds. Fire TV people now learn how to control your satellite receiver. Watch your TV screen for any changes to the current channel. Testing channel up. Okay, so I've just blurred the picture so that I don't get into any copyright issues. But as you can see, it's now controlling the channels on the satellite cable box. And so therefore, from now on, I can literally just ask it to change to a certain channel, either by giving it the channel name or the channel number, and it will do it automatically. Change channel to Sky Sports News. Tuning to Sky Sports News say, on cable. Uh, stabbed at the Arndale Shopping Centre. Now, after their feud, one application which is back on the Amazon Fire TV devices, and this is the same for the Fire Stick or the Fire TV Cube, is the YouTube app. Now, this is also good news because this is also a 4K app, not like the Apple TV, which still is just in 1080p, even on the Apple TV 4K. Another really good feature with the Fire TV Cube is the fact that it has the same speaker as that's in the Echo Dot 3rd generation, the 1.6 inch mini speaker. And that means it delivers a really good sound regardless of whether you've got any other device on. So you can use it completely independently of your AV system, and the including your TV. Could be bad news for Scotland's rugby team. The Scottish Rugby Union are exploring legal options to ensure their Show me my front door. Okay. Having that great voice control also makes it very easy to drop in on other connected devices, for instance, your Ring doorbell or any of your Ring cameras. The Fire TV Cube is definitely a jump forward in voice control, but it's not quite there yet. So for instance, operating Sky, you can't pause live TV and then resume it, and you can't fast forward or rewind. And likewise in Netflix, when you go into the account, you can't switch between the different accounts, so it will open Netflix, but if you've got multiple accounts, which most people have nowadays, you'll still have to use the controller. And to be honest with you, I don't mind that. I actually do quite like scrolling using the control. It's definitely better if you're browsing and you're not exactly sure what you want to watch. So it's not quite made redundant just yet. So if you haven't already got an Amazon device, then this is an absolute no brainer. For me, the highlights are definitely the microphones were brilliant. It picked up almost all they said. The third party AV control is fantastic. And obviously this does act as a standalone speaker as well as the Fire TV. You'd get 4K HDR at 60 FPS. It does brilliant, great upscaling. And finally, it's a fast and smooth experience. So therefore you're not gonna be disappointed with this device. So the Fire TV Cube has definitely improved from the first generation and it's nice to see it for the first time here in the UK. However, I do believe a few improvements and tweaks to the software, particularly in the voice control, will definitely benefit it. So if you've already got an Echo Dot and a Fire Stick 4K, then you probably will skip this completely. But if you haven't, then it's definitely worth considering. I'll leave links in the description so that you can check it out for yourself and read all about it. There's definitely gonna be some improvements coming on this, but this isn't a bad start. 
Now, obviously here in the UK, we've not had it before, so I think it will definitely be popular. I'd be interested to know from you guys that have already seen the first generation, is this that much of improvement from that? Because I didn't get my hands on it. Certainly in my operation, those Farfield microphones were brilliant and I thought it worked really well. Guys, as always, thanks so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you on the next. We will be doing a head-to-head -head between this and the Apple TV 4K and letting you know what our thoughts are there. Thanks again, my friends, and I'll see you on the next one.